Hi everybody and welcome back to Hoots. When we left off, uh, Roy found the article in the paper for Miss Paula's grand opening and he's got an idea. He's got his mother's camera and he is working with Beatrice to hopefully try to save some of these owls. He missed homeroom because he was summoned to the vice principal's office. The long lonesome hair on Miss Hennepin's upper lip was even curlier and shinier than the last time Roy had seen her. Oddly, the hair was now golden blonde in color instead of jet black as before. Was it possible that Miss Hennepin had dyed it, Roy wondered? We've been informed that a young man fled from the hospital emergency room Friday night, she was saying. A young man who was registered falsely under your identity. What can you tell us about that, Mr. Everhart? I don't even know his real name, Roy said flatly. Mullet fingers had been wise not to reveal it. Not knowing had saved Roy from telling another lie. You, expect, you seriously expect me to believe that? Honest, Miss Hennepin. Is he a student here at Trace Middle? No, ma'am, said Roy. The vice principal was visibly disappointed. Obviously, she hoped to claim jurisdiction over the missing runaway. Well, then where does your nameless friend attend school, Mr. Eberhardt? Here goes, Roy thought. I think he travels a lot, Miss Hennepin. Then he's homeschooled? You could say that. Miss Hennepin peered narrowly at Roy. With a gaunt forefinger, she stroked the lustrous strand above her mouth. Roy shivered in disgust. Mr. Eberhardt, it's Ill illegal for a boy your age not to be in school. The offense is called truancy. Oh, I know. Then you might wish to inform your fleet-footed friend of that fact, the vice principal said acidly. Are you aware that the school district has special police who go out searching for truants? They're very good at their job, I assure you. Roy didn't think the truancy police would have an easy time tracking mullet fingers through the woods and mangroves, but the possibility made him anxious anyway. What if they had bloodhounds and helicopters? Miss Hennepin edged closer, craning her stringing neck like a buzzard. You let him use your name at the hospital, didn't you, Mr. Eberhardt? You allowed this delinquent to borrow your identity for his own shady purposes. He got bit by some dogs and he needed a doctor. And you expect me to believe that's all there is to the story? Seriously? Roy can only shrug and surrender. Can I go now? Until we speak again on the subject, you and I, Miss Hennepin said. I know when I smell a rat. Yeah, thought Roy, it's because you're growing one on your lip. At lunchtime, he borrowed Garrett's bicycle and set out for the junkyard. Nobody saw him go, which was fortunate. It was strictly against rules for kids to leave school grounds without a note. Beatrice's stepbrother was napping when Roy burst into the JoJo's ice cream truck. Shirtless and mosquito-bitten, the boy wriggled out of the sleeping bag and took the newspaper from Roy's hands. Roy had expected an emotional reaction to the news of the groundbreaking ceremony, but Mullet Fingers remained surprisingly calm, almost as if he was expecting it. He carefully tore out the Mother Paula advertisement and examined it as if it was a treasure map. Noon, huh? He murmured quietly. It's only 24 hours from now, Roy said. What are we going to do? We who? You, me, and Beatrice. Forget about it, man. I'm not dragging you two into the middle of this mess. Wait, listen to me, Roy said urgently. We already talked about this, me and Beatrice. We want to help you save the owls. Seriously, relaxed and loaded. He unpacked the camera and handed it to the boy. I'll show you how this works, Roy said. It's pretty easy. What's it for? Well, if you can get a picture of one of those birds, we could stop the pancake people from bulldozing the lot. Ah, uh, you're full of it, said the boy. Honest, Roy said. I looked it up on the internet. Those owls are protected. It's totally against the law to mess with burrows unless you've got a special permit and Mother Paula's permit file is missing from City Hall. What does that tell you? Mullet fingers, fingered the camera skeptically. Pretty fancy, he said. But it's too late for fancy, Tex. Now it's time for hardball. No, wait. If we give them proof, they've got to shut down the project, Roy persisted. All we need is one lousy picture of one little bird. You better take off, said the boy. I have stuff to do. But you can't fight the pancake people all by yourself. No way. I'm not leaving until you change your mind. I said, get out of here. Mullet fingers seized Roy by one arm, spun him clockwise, and launched him out of the ice cream truck. Roy landed on all fours in hot gravel. He was slightly stunned. He forgot how strong the kid was. I already caused enough trouble for you and my sister. This is my war from now on. Beatrice's stepbrother stood defiantly in the doorway of his, of his truck, his cheeks flushed and his eyes blazing. In his right hand was Mrs. Eberhardt's digital camera. Roy pointed and said, you keep it for now. Get real. I'll never figure out how to use one of these stupid things. Just let me show you. Nah, said the boy shaking his head. You go on back to school. I have stuff to do. 
Roy stood up and brushed the gravel off his pants. He had a hot lump in his throat, but he was determined not to cry. You've done enough already, the running boy told him, more than I had a right to expect. There were about a million things Roy wanted to say, but the only words he choked out were, good luck tomorrow. Mullet Fingers winked and gave him a thumbs up. Bye, Roy, he said. The newspaper contained several items that would have been excellent for current events. A missing Green Beret soldier had been rescued in the mountains of Pakistan. A doctor in Boston had invented a new drug to treat leukemia. And in Naples, Florida, a county commissioner had been arrested for taking a $5,000 bribe from the developer of a putt-putt golf course. When Roy's turn came to address, when Roy's turn came to address Mr. Ryan's class, he didn't use any of those articles for his topic. Instead, he held up the newspaper and he pointed to the torn page where Mother Paula's advertisement had been. Most everybody here likes pancakes, Roy began. I know I sure do. And when I first heard that a new Mother Paula's was going to open in Coconut Cove, I thought it was pretty cool. Several kids nodded and smiled. One girl pretended to rub her tummy hungrily. Even when I found out they were going to where they were going to build it, that big empty lot on the corner of Woodbury and East Oriole. I didn't see anything wrong with the idea. Then one day a friend of mine took me out there and showed me something that changed my mind totally. Now the other students stopped talking among themselves and paid attention. They'd never heard the new kid say so much. It was an owl, Roy went on, about this tall. He held up two fingers, one eight or nine inches above the other to show them. When my family lived out in the West, we saw plenty of owls, but never one this small. And he wasn't a baby either. He was full grown. He was so straight and serious, he looked like a little toy professor. The class laughed. They're called burrowing owls because they actually live underground, Roy continued, in old holes made by tortoises and armadillos. Turns out that a couple of owl families hang out on that land at Woodbury and East Oriole. They made their nests in the den, and that's where they're raising their babies. Some of the kids shifted uneasily. A few began whispering in worried tones. Some looked at Mr. Ryan, who sat thoughtfully at his desk, chin propped in his hands. Roy, he said gently, this is an excellent subject for biology or social studies, but perhaps not for current events. Oh, it's definitely a current event, Roy continued, because it's happening tomorrow at noon, Mr. Ryan. What is? They're going to start bulldozing to make way for the pancake house. It's like a big party or something, Roy said. The lady who plays Mother Paula's on TV is going to be there. The mayor, too. That's what the paper said. A red-haired girl in the front row raised her hand. Didn't the paper say anything about the owls? No, not a word, said Roy. So what's going to happen to him? Called a freckled-faced boy from the back of the classroom. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Roy looked at Mr. Ryan. The machines are going to bury all those burrows and everything inside. No way, the redhead girl cried, and the class erupted into agitated conversation until Mr. Ryan asked everyone to please be quiet and let Roy finish. The grown-up owls might try to fly away, Roy said, or they might just stay in the den to try to protect their babies. But they'll die, the freckle-faced kid shouted. How can the pancake people get away with this? demanded another one. I don't know. It's not legal, and it's not right. And we're going to stop there.